Welcome to another episode of Bev's Footy Show for Season 2017. This episode is for After Round 18. Let's get straight into having a look at the episode agenda. We're going to start the show by having a look back at the Round 18 results. It was another cracking round, just like uh, every round has been in 2017. Then going to have a look at how those results have affected the ladder uh, then going to do a stats wrap up, the leading disposals, goal kickers, marks and tackles. The five talking points of the week to come after that. And then uh, to finish off the show, I'm going to have a look at the round 19 matches and give you my tips. So that is the episode agenda for this week's show. Time now to get stuck in to the episode. So let's get straight into having a look now at the round 18 results. It all started on Friday night with a top of the table clash between the Adelaide Crows and Geelong at the beautiful Adelaide over in front of uh, just over 50,000 people. And uh, the Crows really made a statement in this game to uh, basically secure themselves as uh, premiership favourites, uh, winning 13-13-91 uh, to Geelong at 10-10-70. Uh, it wasn't the biggest win from them, but uh, yeah, to beat Geelong and uh, yeah, I, I thought they made a, a statement in this game and uh, really uh, se se secured themselves as premiership favourites for now. I wouldn't say they're definitely going to win the flag because there is a few other teams who are in contention, the City Swans being another one and then of course a couple of others, but uh, they are the favourites at this stage, so a good win. For the Crows, it was a good game to start off round 18. We move on to Saturday now. Two Saturday afternoon games, one of them being at Etihad Stadium between the Bombers and North Melbourne. This game was closer than some people expected. In fact, both teams kicked uh, 100 plus points, which is uh, what you love to see from uh, from two teams when watching a game of footy. So it was absolutely spectacular. Uh, the Bombers got the job done in the end and won 2012-132, defeated North Melbourne 169-105 in front of just over 40 thousand people at Eddie had a really good crowd there and uh, well this was kind of a danger game for Essendon because we know that they've uh, lost uh, to teams that they should have beaten but uh, or expected to beaten so a good win from them against North Melbourne on Saturday the other Saturday afternoon game was uh, in Melbourne at the other venue in Melbourne the MCG the home of footy and uh, it was a good game this one but Melbourne won uh, in the end, uh, pretty convincingly, the final score, 13-10-88, defeated Port Adelaide, 9-11-65 in front of uh, just over 27,000. As I mentioned, it was played at the MCG. This is a bit of a setback for Port Adelaide, but for Melbourne, this is a good bounce-back win after uh, that loss to the Crows uh, before this game. So uh, a good win for Melbourne, of course. They are uh, starting to really solidate themselves inside the top eight. And uh, the excitement of playing finals uh, for them is uh, nearing if they keep going with good form. Uh, the Saturday Twilight game was over in Cairns at Kazali Stadium. The Western Bulldogs hosted the Gold Coast Suns. And uh, even though the Dogs conceded the first three goals of the game, they didn't put a foot wrong after that. Uh, they did let the Gold Coast Suns back in the third quarter uh, with the Suns trailing by a point at one stage in the third term, but that was the closest the Suns got. The Dogs uh, clawed away again, won by 50-odd points in front of uh, 9,364 at Kazali Stadium. The final score, the Western Bulldogs 16-14, 110 defeated the Gold Coast Suns, 8-8. 56. Two Saturday night games, uh, the Sydney Swans uh, you know, winning quite convincingly against St Kilda. Uh, the final score, the Sydney Swans 14-17, 101, defeated St Kilda 9-5-59 in front of uh, nearly 36,000 at the SCG. The other Saturday night game at Domain Stadium in Perth, Hawthorne uh, getting the job done over Fremantle in fine style. Fremantle 7-6-48, defeated by Hawthorne 15-10-100 in front 
of 30,818 at Domain Stadium. Three interesting Sunday games. Really was looking forward to this one, Richmond and GWS Giants. And, uh, well, the Giants got the edge of the first quarter, but then after that it was Richmond all the way after being kept goalless in the first quarter and at the quarter time break. And the Giants, they lose another one. Uh, they are struggling at the moment, it's fair to say. The final score, Richmond 9-10-64, defeated the GWS Giants 6-9-45 in front of 33,467 at the MCG. It was in wet conditions, uh, hence why it was so low scoring. Uh, the other Sunday afternoon game was at Eddie Had, and even though the Eagles uh, led by uh, just over three goals in the fourth term, uh, Collingwood came back and, were, uh, and was able to win the game and win back to back wins of course coming into this game they had beaten the Gold Coast Suns away from home so uh, a pretty big setback from an Eagles point of view but a very good win from a Nathan Buckley and Collingwood point of view the final score Collingwood 13-15-93 to feed the West Coast Eagles 13-7-85 in front of just under 23,000 at Eddie Had uh, where to now uh, for the Eagles of course they are uh, Looking like they might miss out on a uh, on a top a top eight place, which is um, yeah not where they want to be. And then the final game, Sunday Twilight game, was an interesting game. This one, and um, well, the Lions they got over the line and won 17-10, 112 to Colton, 11 16 82 in front of uh, 18,847 at the Gabba. I did pick Colton, but I was going to pick the Lions. And it was probably a no-brainer to to uh, to not pick the Lions because they are in. Uh, they've been pretty good the last few weeks, I must say, taking it up to teams and been very well coached by Chris Fagan this season. So that is round 18. The results from another cracking round. Some interesting results. Let's have a look now at the AFL ladder after round 18. Okay, time now to have a look at the AFL ladder after round 18. And, uh, well, the ladder is just unreal at the moment. It's so close uh, in terms of the top 11 in uh, this uh, particular ladder. Uh, the Adelaide Crows are top of the table. I reckon they'll finish uh, top. Uh, they are on uh, 52 points. Uh, that doesn't mean, though, that they are... Uh, they are certain premiership winners of the season because, uh, of course, we've still got a bit of the, a bit of uh, the season to go, and of course, uh, of course, we've got the final series, which uh, we know in recent history the top team can always bow out of uh, Geelong uh, second after that loss. Uh, they uh, keep their second place, uh, even though they did lose to the Crows on the weekend. They're on 46 points, two points clear of GWS and Richmond. Uh, the Giants third, Richmond fourth. Uh, they move up and take Port Adelaide's place, who dropped to fifth after that loss to Melbourne. Uh, you then have the Sydney Swans in sixth. Uh, they are just going very, very well at the moment, the Swans. And uh, I tell you what, they could be the premiership winners at the end of the season. They're in really, really good form after that poor start. We know the poor start they had to the season, but they've really, uh, ever since, gone really hard and done very very well to string good wins together and get themselves inside the top eight. Melbourne is seventh, uh, and then four points behind Melbourne, you have Essendon in eighth. Listen to this, Essendon eighth, West Coast, Western Bulldogs, all on 36 points. That's massive. And also you have St Kilda as well on uh, 36 points as well. So that is uh, five teams, sorry, four teams, uh, all on the same points. And, of course, Essendon have the better percentage out of all of those teams. The Eagles 9th, the Western Bulldogs 10th, Secure 11th, and then you have Hawthorne 12th, uh, four points behind um, those four teams, as I mentioned. And uh, I guess they could mathematically make the top eight, couldn't they, Hawthorne, uh, if one of those teams lose or, or so forth. Uh, and then you have Collingwood 13th, Fremantle 14th, the Gold Coast Suns 15th, Colton 16th, North Melbourne 17th, and then sitting on 18th is the Brisbane Lions. So that is the AFL ladder. It is so tight, so close, very exciting. On now the stats wrap up. So on we go to the stats wrap up after round 18. The leading disposals, goal kickers, marks and tackles. I'll start with the leading disposal getters. Tom Mitchell leads from Hawthorne on 615. Second is Mount Crouch from Adelaide on 400. Uh, sorry, 552. Third is Zach Merritt on 535. Fourth is Rory Lane from Rory Lard, sorry, from the Crows. 
uh, on 522 disposals. And then fifth is Andrew Gaff from the West Coast Eagles on 520. The goal kickers, uh, you have uh, top of the table there, Lance Franklin, who kicked three goals on the weekend against St Kilda. He leads with 50 goals, just halfway there to get to the 100. Uh, which I guess is possible, but uh, he has to do it in uh, in five in five weeks. In fact, maybe it's not that possible to be honest. It's a, a lesser chance that he'll get to the hundred than uh, than a likely chance. That's for sure. Uh, second is uh, or joint second uh, basically Ben Brown and Joe Danaher on 47 each. Ben Brown was exceptional on Saturday against Essen and kicked six goals. Danaher kicked two uh, against North Melbourne. Uh, then you have Josh Kennedy, who kicked a bag of six against Collingwood. However, that didn't uh, get him over the line. And then fifth is Jack Rewalt with 42 goals. He kicked two on the weekend against the Giants. So uh, that is the leading goal kickers. The leading marks is uh, Sam Doherty leading with 161 marks. Second, Jeremy Howe with 136. Third is Jeremy McGovern with 132 marks. Fourth is Cade Simpson on 124 marks. And then fifth is Michael Hurley on 123 marks. And then finally the tackles. Rory Sloan had an exceptional game against Geelong on Friday night. Leads the tackles with 134. Second is Brad Ebert on 131. Third is Dane Zorka on 125. Fourth is Matt Prentice on 121. And then fifth is Clayton Oliver on 117 tackles. So that is the stats wrap up for after round 18. It is uh, always good to see who's leading what in terms of the stats. Okay, time now for the five talking points of the week. Let's get stuck into it with the first talking point, and it's to do with the Eagles. The West Coast Eagles are in strife. I think they are in some big strife. They wouldn't have wanted and guessed that they would be in this position after round 18. They have uh, lost eight games. Probably some of them they were expected to win. And uh, you know, there's, a, there's a few that's been at home as well. Uh, let's just go through their remaining games of the season. And let's just let's toss out whether they can actually make it into that top eight. So next week they've got Brisbane at Domain Stadium. The Lions are playing some good football, but you'd think they'd be able to beat the Lions, especially at Domain Stadium. They go back to Melbourne to versus St Kilda, which is a 50-50 game at Eddie had, but, uh, well, uh, I'd probably be backing St Kilda uh, in that game. So they, I reckon they might lose that game. And then they've got Colton at Domain. Uh, which uh, you'd expect they'll be able to win. Their last two games, GWS at Spotless and then the Crows at Domain, I think they'll lose their last two. So I don't even think they'll make the top eight this year. I think they'll finish outside the top eight, maybe ninth, tenth. Uh, the Dogs might even uh, finish above them, to be honest. Uh, they, they're just not good enough. They're not playing consistent footy. Uh, they might have to have a good, solid look at their list at the end of, their, end of the season because they've got a few older players... I think they need to make some decisions and they need to bring some youth in. And uh, I'm sure there's going to be some discussions about Adam Simpson. He hasn't really done the best of job. You know, he got him into the finals last year, of course, the year before they made the grand final. But this is not where they would have wanted to be uh, at uh, the end of round 18, sitting uh, ninth and out of the top eight on percentage. And, um, yeah, look, you look at the, the teams they've... You look at the teams that they've they've versed inside the, the the top eight. They lost to Richmond, lost to Port Adelaide. Uh, they did beat the Swans uh, earlier in the season. They did beat Geelong, uh, but they've lost some games that they should have won or expected to win. To be honest, so uh, they've got to really dig deep in this final five games. We'll probably learn a lot more about them in the in the next five games. But I think they are in strife, and I think uh, there's going to be discussions at the end of the year to. Uh, to, to get a plan on, on, on how they're going to go moving forward if they do uh, finish outside the top eight. Even if they do get in the top eight, I don't think they'll go very far. They might bow out week one like they did last year. Next talking point is the Josh Kelly business is making GWS suffer. 
Uh, I wouldn't have thought so. I don't think it's a distraction. It shouldn't be a distraction. You look at Richmond and Dustin Martin. They're playing some very good football, Richmond. They're inside the top four. And uh, you wouldn't have thought that the Dustin Martin uh, situation and the Dustin Martin talks, contract talks, etc., where, where he's going next year has really distracted them. You can't just put it down. You can't... Uh, uh, a performance of a team, you can't just put it down to one single thing and one single player and their con contract negotiations. That's not how it works. GWS haven't been playing the best of footy. Uh, they, um, you know, after that loss to Colton uh, and then the bye, they, they've only won one since the bye. They... Uh, they won against Brisbane at the Gabba, then drew against Geelong, drew against Hawthorne, lost Sydney and lost to Richmond on Sunday. And they've got Fremantle coming up at Spotless Stadium, a game which they'll probably be expected to win but won't be easy, uh, I would have thought, uh, especially with the, uh, the position they're in. But uh, no, I, I, I don't think the Josh Kelly business is, um, is making them suffer. It shouldn't be. Uh, obviously, we'll know where he's going at the end of, uh, at the end of this year in terms of next year. Uh, but, yeah, no, I, I wouldn't have thought that uh, he's the sole reason. Even though he's been a bit out of form, I wouldn't have thought that he's the sole reason of why they're suffering. They're just in a bit of bad form. They have lost some personnel to injuries. But, uh, but, but yeah, they're, just, they're not playing good footy. And uh, they didn't really suit the wet on, uh, on, Sat on Sunday against uh, Richmond, which is partly what cost them. Although there was uh, other things as well, like Toby Green and, and some other scenarios. Talking point number three, Nick Rewalt will retire at season end. I think he, he probably will retire at the end of year. Although I think the speculation and and, uh, and whether he's going to retire or not has been a bit unfair on him by the by the media, in my opinion. I know that's that's their job, and 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 you know an aspiring journalist like me totally understands that, and it's understands that that's the that's the caper that we're in when you go into the media, but. Uh, Honestly, he's a legend. Uh, he played a very, very good game against uh, Richmond uh, not too long ago. Uh, I think uh, I think the talk, the speculation has been quite unfair. And, uh, you know, I'd love to see him go on next year. It's probably not going to happen. But let's just wait and see uh, when he makes that announcement and if he does make that announcement. I, I, I do hope that he makes the announcement soon if he is going to retire because I'd, you know, like him to play a farewell game or something like that. But... Um, just let him play out the season, and uh, obviously at the end of the season, obviously we'll, we'll, we'll see if he's actually going to retire or not. But I, like I said, I think the speculation, the talk's been a bit unfair on a, on a legend of the game, an absolute champion. Talking point number four, North Melbourne are tanking. I find this absolutely remarkable that people were actually uh, uh, bringing this up and actually asking the question of whether North Melbourne are actually tanking and then obviously discussing uh, that the North Melbourne-Brisbane game is going to be a fight for pick one in round 23. I think it's absolutely ridiculous. North Melbourne aren't tanking at all. Uh, they, yeah, they they played some very good football on Saturday, actually. Ben Brown played very, very well. They took it up to the Bombers, kept it close, kicked 100-plus points. Of course they're going to play some youth. They're in a redeveloped stage, and if they get pick one, they get pick one, but they're not tanking for it. It's absolutely ridiculous. It's a statement. It's a question, a stupid question. They aren't tanking, and, um, you know, they might win another one before that game against the Lions, and same with the with the Brisbane Lions as well. They might, uh, they might win uh, a game uh, before... Uh, before that game as well. So, uh, in fact, they've got the Gold Coast Suns coming up, and I'm sure they're going to beat them at, uh, at the Gabba. So, so um, honestly, uh, that's a ridiculous thing to, to think. Uh, North Melbourne are, are a developing side now. They're not like last year. Uh, they were never going to play finals this season. They're probably not going to play finals uh, in the next couple of seasons. They can't be tanking, though. Surely not. I am definitely strong on that opinion. Final talking point is to do with St Kilda. It's a failed season if St Kilda don't make the finals. Uh, yes, in some ways, I do believe that it is a fail if they don't make the finals. They're currently sitting 11th. They finished 9th last year. If they finish anywhere below 9th uh, this season, then uh, you'd say that it's a failed season. They've only beaten two teams inside the top eight this year. They haven't taken it up to many uh, top eight sides. They've only, uh, they've only won against, uh, against the Giants. And uh, they they also uh, they also beat Richmond as well, uh, but they've 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 been a little disappointing uh, when they've actually you know they've actually got big wins against quality opposition. They've actually went the next week or or even the week after. They've they've just went you know 
into I guess a sleep mode and haven't played that uh, that that style that we we saw that we see previously. So they're not they're not consistent enough with their game. And uh, look, I'm not sure if they're going to make the top eight. They've got some tough games coming up. There is some winnable ones. Port Adelaide's probably a 50-50 on Saturday, but you'd think Port Adelaide would be able to get home at the Adelaide Oval. They don't go away and play well St Kilda. That's also something that is uh, that is not great and needs improving. Uh, and then they've got uh, they've got uh, the Eagles at home, uh, which is one I'd probably back them to win. Uh, Melbourne at the MCG, North Melbourne at Etihad and Richmond. They've got some, 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 some maybe some, some games they should win in that in that run, but it's still a, a pretty kind of tough run home uh, into the uh, into the finals. So, uh, look, in some ways, I think it is a failed season. They do have a lot of talent there, though, uh, but they just haven't performed consistently this year, and that's been the disappointing part. They've played some very, very good footy at times, some top eight worthy footy, but it's not consistent. Okay, time now to get into round 19, the matches and my tips. And uh, it's going to be another beauty round. It all starts on Friday night with uh, Hawthorne and the Sydney Swans. They met uh, at the SCG earlier in the season. Hawthorne uh, knocked the Swans off by a goal. Uh, this game at 7.50pm, as I mentioned at the MCG. You can watch it on 7 and Fox Footy. I think the Swans are in much better form. But I'm expecting that it's going to be a close game. I don't think the Swans are going to get it all their own way. I think Hawthorne will take it up to the Swans. They've been remarkable in the back end of the season, Hawthorne. And, uh, well, they... They can still make the top eight mathematically, so uh, so um, yeah, if they win this, then uh, they're right back in the mix. Uh, Saturday there is uh, five games as usual. Uh, the first one at 1:45 p.m. at Blundstone Arena is North Melbourne and Melbourne. This game on uh, this game on Fox Footy, and uh, this game is uh, the third of uh, three games at Blundstone Arena in 2017. I'm going to tip Melbourne, although they haven't beaten North Melbourne for some time, so it should be a, a beauty. In fact, the last time these two teams met... Uh, uh, yeah, the last time these two teams met at Bloodstone Arena, it was a close one, and they, uh, I think they, they met earlier in the year, didn't they, and North Melbourne won. So uh, it's going to be a, an interesting match at Bloodstone Arena on Saturday. The... Uh, the other Saturday afternoon game at 2.10pm is between the GWS Giants and Fremantle at Spotless Stadium. You can watch that one on Fox Sports 3. Uh, the Twilight game, very interesting one at the Adelaide Oval between Port Adelaide and St Kilda. You can watch this on Fox Footy. Starts at 4.05pm local, 4.35pm Eastern. I'm expecting Port Adelaide to bounce back after that loss to Melbourne. But uh, it could be a tight game. But as I, uh, as I mentioned in the five talking points of the week, St Kilda don't really travel that uh, that goodly, uh, although they did beat Freeman in Perth uh, not too long ago. Two Saturday night games, one of them being at Metricon Stadium between the Gold Coast Suns and Richmond. You can watch that one on Fox Sports 3 starting at 7.25pm. I'm expecting Richmond to get a big win against the Suns. The other one is at Etihad Stadium at the same time, 7.25pm. It's Colton and Geelong. You can watch it on 7 and Fox footy. Uh, Geelong should win. Uh, three Sunday games. This uh, this one probably the match of the round, I reckon. Maybe one of them uh, at 1:10 p.m. The Western Bulldogs at Essendon at Eddie Had Stadium. You can watch it on Fox Footy. Should be a ripper. The Western Bulldogs are sitting outside the eight on percentage. They're on the same points as Essendon. Win and they they could probably go inside the top eight or even uh, to uh, to ninth place if they win. So I'm going to tip them because they're my side. Don't usually tip against them, and I actually think they can actually win this game. Although it should be. A rip of the Western Bulldogs to Essendon at Eddie had 1.10 p.m. to kick off Sunday footy. The mid-Sunday afternoon game at 3.20 p.m. is between Collingwood and the Adelaide Crows at the MCG. You can watch this one on 7 and Fox Sports 3. Uh, I reckon the Crows will win. They'll be too strong for Collingwood, who did uh, enjoy some winning success last week against the Eagles. And the final game of Round 19 is between the West Coast Eagles and the Brisbane Lions at Domain Stadium. You can watch it on Fox Footy. It starts at 2.40pm local. That's 4.40pm Eastern Time. I reckon the Eagles will bounce back. They should bounce back. If they lose this one, then they can cut their... Uh, they can uh, cut their season and uh, and, and say goodbye to, uh, to finals because... Uh, yeah, if you lose to the Brisbane Lions at home or any lower tier side at home, then that's uh, you know that's probably not acceptable to be honest. So uh, I'm tipping the Eagles for that one. Although the Lions, no doubt, are playing some improved footy from last year in 2017. So that that is the round 19 matches and my tips. 
And that is it for this week's episode of Bev's Footy Show. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed, don't forget to like, comment, share this video, subscribe to keep up to date with a new episode of this show every week. And, uh, well, until next week, enjoy round 19. It's going to be another beauty round. I'm Bev. Bye for now.